It's time to take a new approach to finding true fulfillment in your career, health, and state of mind through insightful conversations with those who have found their professional and personal passions while achieving balance. Whether it's entrepreneurs, athletes, or healthcare professionals, we bring you real people, real growth, right here on the Boost Podcast. Now, here's your host, Elena Lipson. Hey, Boo Squad, and welcome to Episode 9. Elena Lipson here, and I am so pumped to introduce today's trio of featured guests. We have Mary Jo Slidell, Jill Wiener, and Lauren Rice. Mary Jo, Jill, and Lauren, are you guys ready to join the Boo Squad? Yes! Awesome. I love the enthusiasm. So these three women are the founders of FitScene, which is a social networking fitness group for women in the suburbs of Washington, D.C. The group offers member events and discounts to local fitness studios. And the story of how Mary Jo, Jill, and Lauren came together to start FitScene is pretty fascinating, and I cannot wait for them to share it with you. First, let me start off by giving you a little bit of background about each of them. So Mary Jo has an MBA, and she's had a few entrepreneurial ventures prior to founding FitScene. She previously had an online baby gift business called Lulu and Ann, and she's worked extensively with Bungalow, who's famous for their scout bags. She's always been really active, and she was a college lacrosse player. She currently lives in Maryland with her husband and her three kids, and she coaches two lacrosse teams. Lauren has a master's degree in health promotion and a 200-hour yoga training certification. She grew up in upstate New York, and she's always been a runner, competing in races from 5K to marathons. Her latest accomplishment was placing third in her age group at the 2016 Richmond Marathon with a time of three hours and six minutes. You go, girl. Before (laughs) founding Fitzine, she worked in health communications at the National Cancer Institute, and she currently lives in Maryland with her husband and her three kids. Jill is a certified health coach through the Institute for Integrative Nutrition. She's a former spin instructor and a prior employee of the Consumer Electronics Association, where she helped to plan the largest trade show in the U.S. Jill is a native of D.C., and like Mary Jo and Lauren, she's always been really active. She's never met a fitness class that she didn't like, and she participates in CrossFit competitions and local races. She also lives in Maryland with her husband, her two kids, and her wiener dog. So now that you know a little bit about these amazing three women, I want to just jump right into it. So Mary Jo, what are the three things that we should know about FitScene? Thanks for having us, Elena. The first thing which you kind of mentioned was we are a social networking fitness group for local women only. So our group is for women only. There's a lot of social networking, kind of run clubs, often you'll find for men and women, and also some for women, but there's nothing quite like us that exists out there trying to connect like-minded women over a health and fitness platform. So the second point would be that our mission is really to connect these women. We found in this area that there's a lot of women who are very much into health and fitness. They're well-educated, they're social, and just trying to connect with each other outside of their, you know, neighborhood or school community. It's how we came up with the idea. The three of us kind of met that way. We were introduced by mutual friends because one of us was looking to do a race and the other person was looking for a running group. And we just keep, kept coming across women that were trying to connect with others to try something new or to take a class they hadn't taken before or to go for a hike or a bike ride. I love that. So you mentioned that this is for local women. Do you target a specific um, age demographic of of local women? I would say our age demographic is women who are in their 30s to 50s. That's what we found so far. I think we're going to be targeting women in their 20s this next year because we think they are, they have more time. They're not as set in their ways. They seem to be more into wanting to try new things. Great. Great. And that leads pretty well into our next question. Um, So Lauren, when you look at the business of FitScene right now, what do you see now and in the future? Um, Right now, as Mary Jo mentioned, we have just slowly been growing for the past year. And our, our goal really was to take it slowly so we could figure out what people were interested in and how 
how we could service them with this idea that we want to bring them all together and we want to be involved with the local studios and local races. So for this past year, we have tried a lot of different things and had over 50 events. And we're starting to think about uh, what what's next, especially for the upcoming year. And I think that looks a little bit different. We want to start having smaller, not smaller events, um, but less events so that we have more people at the events. Great. I love that. And I think what I want you all to hear that Lauren mentioned is that their goal initially was not to make money. So I think um, a lot of times when you grow these communities, the most important thing at first is to get an engaged user base and build that engagement in the community. And then the money will usually flow after. If you just go out and chase the money, you're probably going to miss building that community element. So I think it's really important that your focus was on building the community, finding out what the right events were, what the right discounts and offers were to, to offer your members that are going to engage the most. So that's really important for you guys to understand. Can you talk to me a little bit more, Lauren, about what it's like when you join? So what's the member experience? Like, how does it work? Someone signs up for 15, how much does it cost? And then what do they get? So uh, right now, people mostly would sign up on our website, which is the fitscene.com. And the price is low, which is also um, something we, we wanted it to be. We wanted people to feel like, they were committing to something, but it wasn't going to be cost prohibitive. So it's $40, and we typically are running some sort of special that usually brings it down to $30 or even $25. So with the benefits that we have, the discounts that you, you just mentioned with many of the local businesses, they're not just fitness studios. They can be anything from juice, juice businesses, we have worked out different deals with different restaurants. Sometimes it's a one-time thing. Other times we have ongoing, like 10%, 15% off, and even some of the fitness clothing stores. So it really does pay for itself. And right now you just sign up online. It's a pretty easy form to fill out. And then we are still using a plastic membership card that we would mail to you. And we actually hopefully... We'll maybe have something a little bit different in the future so that that's all on your phone and you're not you know, worried about this card that you have to show because we don't want people to forget about the benefits their membership brings. And then really you're then added to our – that's really it for signing up. But then you're added to our Facebook group. We have a, a, a main page, but we also have a private group. So that's really where uh, right now we're hoping people connect. And we do have people asking questions, you know, what's the best workout video? You know, we want them to start to talk to about different events that races, which they, they are doing. So we want them to engage. They also are able to do that face-to-face -face at many of our events, which you could also sign up at an event. We don't do as much of that. There are certain events where we sign people up. Uh, there have only been, I'd say, a handful this year. And next year, it's really just easier for them to do it online. But that's also a way for them to network. Great. I love what you're doing so much because women in their 30s to 50s are a group that they really need some love. I mean, they have a lot going on. Most of them are mothers or um, even caregivers. So the average age of a caregiver tends to be 49 years old. They're typically a woman and oftentimes they're caring for their parent and their younger child as well. So it's really hard for this age group to find time to take care of themselves, both to see their friends and be social and also just to be healthy and have access um, to juices and workouts and things that they might not have time to do. I know that um, I have a friend of mine who joined your group and she just raves about it because she takes her kids um, and does races with them and it gets the whole family out exercising. So she's able to get that exercise, but she also gets that family time and to see friends. And so I love the mission of what you guys are doing and you took something that you're passionate about and you're sharing it with other people in your community. So I just want to commend you for that. I think that's awesome. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs> um, so, Jill, tell us a little bit more about how you've grown your business. Why don't you give us a couple tactics that have worked well for you guys? Sure thing. So, because we've just been around for a little over a year at this point, we tried a couple different things and we're hoping to expand more in the coming year. But we've largely focused on word of mouth in this first year. I would say social media, particularly Facebook, working with the demographic that we are, Facebook 
is definitely king, if you will. So we've done a lot of outreach on Facebook, and I've, we've found that that's been really good in getting our name out and, and creating brand awareness for us. We've created relationships with local fitness studios and businesses, gyms, all sorts, but as Lauren was saying, like juice companies, um, again, primarily the, we started with the fitness studios and, you know, local fitness businesses, um, because we feel like if they know about us, they like what we're doing, we're trying to send business their way, then they're going to do likewise and try and share with us as well. So creating those relationships, I think, puts us in a good position for brand awareness and for people to know who we are and what we're doing. So I would say those are probably the top three ways that we've that we've gotten the word out so far. Great. And I think that makes a lot of sense. You look at a lot of new and community-based businesses and they have to be scrappy because they don't have marketing dollars. They don't have brand recognition. And the fact that you've been able to create relationships with so many local businesses, have over 50 events in your first year, just really speaks highly to the, the market desire for something like this. The fact that both businesses and consumers are really interested in participating in these things. And you guys didn't even really have like a marketing budget to go out and do that. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> and I know you guys are laughing because you probably know how hard it is, but I want that to be really inspiring for you because you don't have to have a ton of money to get an idea off the ground. And I think something else that would be inspiring for our listeners is to hear a bit how the three of you came together because it wasn't like the three of you got together and built this thing from the ground up in someone's living room. It was kind of organic and evolved over, you know, a number of interactions and over the course of time. So, um, Jill, can you tell us a little bit about, about how that evolved? Um, well, it sort of it goes back several years because again, we all fall into this demographic. I actually met Lauren, I guess about seven years ago now. Uh, we met at the library at story time with our babies um, <laughs> as, as is the case often around here. And we connected um, partially because we were both stay at home moms. We were both slightly on the slightly younger end of the spectrum for the area. Of, for first-time mothers, and we were both sort of into fitness and didn't want to let having a baby get in the way of something that we cared about, which was, yo Lauren was a yoga instructor, I was teaching indoor cycling at the time, and so we both were really motivated to stay fit, and a lot of what we did, a lot of our activity as, you know, as friends and as parents was getting out and running with the jogging strollers or going for long walks with the kids or, you know, getting outside and staying active. So we didn't necessarily let having children get in the way of that. And there was definitely always a lot of, I think we had that common ground to start on. So fast forward several years, Lauren and Mary Jo had met. Um, Mary Jo has long been involved in the community of women around here and she's always planned these larger events of like triathlon relays or big organizing large groups of women to go away for a destination race like they're going the fit scene is actually doing a destination half marathon this year in naples florida in january um so mary jo's been doing this for a while and has a really really well connected in the area and she was doing a triathlon relay and somebody needed a substitute to fill in for their run portion and so she got connected with lauren they also their kids were at the same preschool and lauren of course ran out and did that and probably won her division or something <laughs> i don't know I was and then pregnant. yeah she was pregnant as well <laughs> so then fast forward from there and i was actually training and was looking for a group to run with simply because i was tired of running alone and lauren said let me ask my friend mary joe she probably knows people and mary joe actually has a group in her neighborhood so i got connected with them and it was sort of like a blind date and i showed <laughs> up and ran 10 miles with mary joe and you know, it all went from there. Yeah. And so that's how we all connected. And Mary Jo, because she's planned all these large events, the triathlon relays, the, the destination races, I think the fit scene was sort of born out of those events and seeing the fact that all these women wanted to be involved in these sort of active endeavors. So it sort of started there. And then Mary Jo approached Lauren about working on it. And then I sort of jumped in and here we are. <laughs> <laughs> yes, here you guys are. Uh, the 250-member strong organization. So I think your story 
is really illustrative of a couple things. The most important one, I think, is just being open to opportunities when they happen. So you guys weren't out seeking this opportunity, but you were. your paths kept crossing and you all knew you were interested in the same things and you just happened to test something out that then you realized there was a demand for and you were open for it. So I think a lot of times people feel like they have to like have this idea before they can go and do something. And I would say it's great to be you know really thoughtful and plan a lot, but it's also okay to just stumble upon something and find that there's a need and that there's people that you really click with and and see where that can take you too. And you guys have come really far with that approach and have started a really great community. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. So I'm sure it hasn't been easy. I'm sure that there's been some roadblocks and times when you've wondered if you've taken on too much while balancing your families and things like that. So Lauren, can you tell us a little bit about a time when you've stagnated or stopped making progress and how you handled that? So it's only been a year, but We did mention already that we had a lot of events this year, and what we started to notice was that we didn't we didn't feel like we were connecting people because the events were small, and maybe moving a little bit away from our initial you know idea of what we wanted the fit scene to be, and also just our mission. But we've sort of started to figure out that our demographic is really busy, and we obviously all know that from experience. They have typically a lot lot of people in our demographic have young children and they're balancing their families and their work. So now as we're sorting, we already, I think, talked about a little bit is next year, just having these bigger events just a few times over the year. Just going into next year, I think we're looking to have some cornerstone events, which would be rather than having, as Lauren described, all these different studio classes throughout the year, we're going to have them focused on one long weekend where members and even non-members can pay to participate in designated classes at various studios in the area and having a speaker series. We have so many amazing women that are our members that have so much information to share. We've had so many women connected to us because of the fit scene that have a lot of important information to share. So we want to have a networking slash panel event for women um, probably in the fall. And also another one of our signature events, which is always well attended, is a happy hour with all the local fitness leaders and our members. Um, And that was a really cool thing because it's not often that all the different studio owners and trainers all get together in like a social, often there might be competition between them, but it was, that event was one of my favorite ones and we, it was very well attended. And then in addition to that, we're going to also do continue with our designated races because it's just an awesome way for the women to bond and to be inspired. So many times women will sign up having never done a race before And it's kind of the best feeling to see someone accomplish that, having never done it. So we'll do another triathlon relay, and we always do the Rock the Creek relay. Um, We love to support local businesses, and that's one of our favorite. That one's in September. And, of course, a destination half marathon, which we do every year. And as they mentioned, we're going to Naples in January. And then lastly, I think you touched upon it a little bit, Elena, that the family piece And part of it is noticing that there is guilt for these women associated with choosing themselves or exercise over their kids or their, or their spouse. And so we also decided to have some events that were family centered. So we have a whole family series and one of the big events is the Just Trying It Kids Triathlon in June, which supports families who have kids with cancer. And we had 50 kids on our team last year and they raised $10,000. It was awesome. So we're definitely doing that again, and they trained together. It was really great. It was a the, the families went to the track and ran together. We biked together on the trail, um, and then we also do an event with Aviva um, and Equinox for the girls. So, kind of in a nutshell, that's how we're going to streamline things for next year. I mean, this was definitely a learning year, having over fifty events, and I think it helped us to realize where we need to focus our time in order to get our members the most engaged. So Yeah, it sounds like you're being really strategic about things. And even though you're going in a lot of different areas next year, I think that you're taking what you learned this year and you're trying to package it a little bit differently. And 
you know, I think I did the same thing in my business. In my first year, I um, said yes to everything. And you kind of see what sticks. And then you're pickier after that because you realize what you like doing, what's providing value to the people you're trying to serve. And so I really encourage you, if you're thinking of starting a new business, to be very open and say yes a lot in the beginning so you can figure out what you should say no to afterwards and how you should pivot. And it's great that you guys have been so open to growing and iterating as you learn more and more. Um, and I have to request an invite to the happy hour when you guys have it. <laughs> not, yes. not, not just because I like to have a drink every now and then, but I love to get to know my um, fitness instructors. I feel like I have such better work- workouts when I actually know the instructor. So I love to meet other instructors in the area. So I'll be looking for that invite. (laughs) For sure. (laughs) Um, But it sounds like you guys really have a lot on your plate for next year. So Mary Jo, can you talk a little bit more about how do you guys keep a work-life balance between raising your kids and building this business? How do you take some time for yourself? I think that's an interesting question for us specifically in this business because the three of us are very passionate about fitness and exercising. And it's ironically, that is what we do for our time for ourselves. So often when I'm walking out the door to go to a fit scene event, I'm going to a happy hour with the fitness leaders or I'm going to a spinning class or I'm going to try a new class at the gym. And so in some ways, like the work time that we're spending is time for ourselves. On the other hand, it can be overwhelming. I mean, the three of us have kind of agreed that our kids are still the most important thing. And we're very involved in their schools and we volunteer in their schools. We coach their teams. And so you'll often find the three of us texting at 11 p.m. (laughs) trying to make a plan for our event that week. And so it's been a little bit difficult, but I think we went into this year after having one year under our belt, giving ourselves set hours and times that we would meet and talk and discuss the business and being a little more organized about how we approach it. But I think we're really lucky to be working on a business that centers around something that we really enjoy doing and feel very passionately about. That's great. And I think what you're really getting at is that you're setting boundaries now for um, for kind of like when you're going to collaborate and work together because otherwise it can just be like 24 seven. So, um, this year has kind of made you realize where you need to get organized and set those boundaries because this is something that you do for fun as well as work. And so you could end up really never having that escape if you just go 24 seven. (laughs) So, well, let's close out with a motivational tip. Jill, can you help us with that? Sure thing. Uh, something that I've always said, again, being a part of the fitness industry, previously as an instructor and now sort of a different capacity, one of the things that I feel really strongly about is that there's something for everyone out there. So you may have tried running and say, well, I'm not a runner. I Exercise just isn't for me. And that couldn't be further from the truth. The industry has boomed in such a way that there's so many options out there, different classes, different, I mean, it could be yoga, it could be bar, it could be cycling, it could be, there's so many different options. And I truly think that there's something for everyone. And one of the things that we're trying to help people achieve is finding that fit. You know, whether it's trying the different classes and saying, oh my gosh, I really love the studio. This is what I'm going to do from now on. And I get a discount with my membership. So total bonus or whatever it is, finding a run partner, finding something that's going to keep you motivated. It is out there. You just have to be persistent and find it. So I think that would be our our, uh, motivational tip for everyone. Yes. So if you are going to take one thing from today's episode and you feel like you're too busy to exercise or you don't like running or yoga, know that there is something out there for you and communities like FitScene can help you find it or even, you know, just figuring out what's going on in your own community, even if there's not a group that can help you. So I hope today's episode inspires you to think more about how you can find your passion and live your best life. For more information, including links to resources that Mary Jo, Lauren, Jill, and I chatted about today and how best to get in touch with them, head on over to our website, theboostpodcast.com, and check out our show notes from this episode and catch the Boost bonus. Mary Jo, Lauren, and Jill, I want to thank you guys for sharing your journey with us today. And remember, anything is possible for you. 
Now that you've completed this episode, the next step is to join the Boost Squad for strategic insights, tips, and tricks, as well as exclusive resources designed specifically to accelerate your personal and professional growth. All this and more is waiting for you at theboostpodcast.com.